Welcome to Writing Wednesday number 8. This week we continue the scene with Marshall and Jasmine as they debate the merits of a medical case, find out it was a poisoning, and Marshall projects his personal issues onto an entirely separate subject. These are just some of the spoiler alerts as I write my rough draft, The Wedding, Book 10 of the Ramsley Brothers series. Join me as we discuss character flaws and making characters more relatable for readers. And welcome back to Writing Wednesday. This is episode 8 in the series. Not that any of them have to be taken in order, although some of them are uh, substantial scenes, but just so that you let you know that there is a number of Writing Wednesdays out there as we continue Book 10, The Wedding of the Ramsley Brothers series. You can see on the left-hand side of my screen that there is some um, little articles that I have cut and pasted about aneurysms and other heart issues which are going to come to play into this particular scene and I just had to make sure that I had the correct wording which is why I cut and pasted those things from our lovely friend Google and in regards to how they fit to my character this is what I call my research file and I just put in anything in it that I need that will affect my storyline that I want to get right more or less um or at least make believable <laughs> in real world circumstances. So it's always good to have a little research file. I just call it research, throw it on my desktop. And once I'm done with the information in it, I delete that out and I add new information as I go along. So it's kind of an ever changing document. It's fluid. It continues to do its thing. We're continuing with last week's scene from episode seven as we continue with Marshall and Jasmine, who are recently married. They're both doctors. Marshall is a general surgeon at Mercy Hospital who has recently uh, resigned as he will be joining his wife, Jasmine, who was a cardio surgeon at another hospital on the other side of the country. And she has also recently resigned, and the reason being is that they will be returning to her homeland to work with her family doing what they need to do over there. And I don't want to get into it too much, because otherwise it will be a little too much of a spoiler alert. And as much as I like and enjoy giving you spoiler alerts throughout this book, there are some things that should be kept a secret. For the time being, at least, anyways. So... Here we are, and uh, they are going through a patient file. It is her last case. She's supposed to be writing a rejection letter, um, a letter basically, uh, an email, to a patient's doctor team but that basically states that, unfortunately, his condition is inoperable, she's very sorry, she could not help him, yada yada, and um, poor guy will... Uh, eventually pass away of his condition, which is why I have all that research information on the left-hand side. So we've explained his condition in the previous video. Um, basically, he has a thinning heart and thinning veins, and it's not going well, and it's set him into um, some heart failure. So he's starting to experience heart failing um, symptoms, Things like fatigue, um, he might have swelling in his ankles or his hands, like retention of water. Um, he might have, um, with the arrhythmia, he might feel sudden like changes in heartbeat. He might get breathless, feel some weakness, things like that. So this poor gentleman's been having a bit of a tough time. And we'll add to that that he has a fantastic little aneurysm underneath his heart, which could burst at any time and basically off him. <laughs> I know, I sound so wonderfully excited about that, which is funny, but uh know all about aneurysms. <laughs> oh, love family medical history. Um, so I've I've transitioned some of my personal uh knowledge to my writing, which is always a good thing. You should write what you know, and what you don't know, make up. <laughs> Not really. You can always go researching. Um, so they were discussing who the patient might be, and maybe he's famous. Why doesn't he have a name on the patient file? Basically, um, his doctor team is ensuring that he gets 
um, unbiased medical care um, so that nobody's saying anything that they shouldn't be because this person has some influence in some, um, well, his family has influence, shall we say. So we're going to keep him a secret at the moment. And so dear Marshall and Jasmine have no idea who it is, but they're very curious. They're, they're debating whether he could be an actor, a politician, a sports star, guess Jasmine, who knows? I just know he's not going to qualify for a transplant like this. Yes. So he needs a heart transplant, sorry, a heart transplant because he is having heart failure. Is it genetic? Wondered Marshall. If the walls are just going to continue thinning, then there's no point in trying to give him a new heart. He would die eventually anyways. And that is true because, I mean, if if he's just going to continue to get worse, then why would you do anything to try and help him get better when it would just be a waste of a heart to this particular patient? And that heart could go to somebody else who would have a longer lifespan with it. So his lifespan is basically measured in months, not in years without this heart transplant and the way things are going for him. So Jasmine has determined that it is not genetic. I had him for a, co a complete history. From there, I have determined that he has been poisoned. Dun, dun, dun. Let's throw that shocker out there. Poisoned, Marshall looked at her in surprise. Yes, affirmed Jasmine with some satisfaction. Accidentally or intentionally, I do not know. He has been ingesting salidroside. I don't know what that is, admitted Marshall. Neither do a lot of people, and I did not either before I began my research. But I knew that I needed an herb that would work and do the side effects, and especially if it was consumed over a period of years, might get a person to this state of health, which in my fictional world, it has. So this is actually completely possible, which is fantastic. <laughs> and again, like I've said in the past, it is work fiction. If you have to make up something new, as long as it fits your story. You can't be entirely unrealistic, but you can always put it in something new because new things are being discovered all the time. Fun things. So it's an herb, clarified Jasmine. It was in a tea he was taking for depression and energy for years. Traditionally, it's used in Chinese medicine. More lately, it has been studied for positive effects of reducing myocardial ischemia with mixed results. The guy's tea is killing him? Marshall asked with some disbelief, which it's, it's kind of funny when you put it that way. Like, seriously, you're drinking tea and it's killing you. Like, I drink tea every day, pretty much. Well, almost every day. In the summertime, I slack off a little bit because who wants hot tea in the summer? But, you know, yeah, the guy's tea is killing him. It's in his history, shrugged Jasmine as she switched the screen to show the highlighted parts of the document of pertinent history. He would put the bags of tea in his coffee. He's a bit of a caffeine addict. <laughs> yeah. Yes, he is. Oh, poor guy. Well, we all have to have some flaw in this poor character. He's a caffeine addict. And that's true. Your characters should have flaws. And they should be flaws that are not just put there just for effect. It needs to be a relatable flaw that is pertinent to the character. And there's my dog sleeping upside down in bed behind me while I'm trying to write. And I have blocked out the noise so that you will not hear her snoring. Silly little dog. But uh, she's having a great time. Anyhow, I was talking about character flaws. And the important bit is that uh, they are relatable to each character you don't just put them in just so the character has a flaw because if it's not part of something that is pertinent to the storyline then it just feels really forced and silly and unusual and if something is forced your readers are going to notice and it's going to just feel kind of discombobulated it's going to feel like it's not working 
and the readers will not connect with that character the way they, they should. So, and back to writing here. Uh, Marshall studied the screen. Yes, it's too bad you can't find a way to make the veins thicker. Then you could put the stent in during the heart transplant. So yes, please, Marshall, state the obvious. Jasmine sighed. I have been procrastinating on the letter. I do not know why. I cannot change the outcome. The poor man is simply inoperable. So she has come to the conclusion that most people have in this particular case that uh, without with the veins being so thin, they simply can't uh, do any sort of operation because it would just shred the veins, basically, and this guy would bleed out. So it's kind of a no-win scenario for our Mr. X patient. Maybe, muttered Marshall, because Marshall is Marshall, and Marshall always seems to think that there is a solution to everything if you just think about it and apply it and, you know, he's very confident, has a little bit of too much pride in some ways, but mostly very confident because he's lived a bit of a charmed life. Marshall warned Jasmine, I have tried to think of anything to help him. Numerous doctors have been reviewing his case and everyone agrees it is inoperable. Okay, it is inoperable. Marshall put down the tablet, turning to face Jasmine. Pretend in a perfect world you could change that. What would you do? Jasmine laughed. Nothing. The world is not perfect. It is perfect with you in it. Flattery will definitely get you everywhere, Marshall. Uh, de declared Marshall. He gave her a gentle kiss, then stood up, pacing the floor. Now you have no budget. Amazing hospital staff. I shouldn't say no budget. I should say unlimited budget. So we're going to have to go back and fix that. See, this is why you kind of read things through afterward. Reading things out loud, especially, helps in the editing process. If you don't like reading things out loud when you're editing, you could even put it on like text to read that they have in these programs. Uh, Microsoft Word even lets you pick your voice. <laughs> so if you like to prefer to who you want to listen to, you listen to them. You can speed it up. You can slow it down. And you can just listen to the words and then go, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. Because what you type and what your head thinks makes sense at the time doesn't always fit with what makes sense afterward when you're reading it. So let's say she has an unlimited budget, amazing hospital staff, and those talented hands of hers. You need to make his veins thicker so he'll be able to tolerate a heart transplant. How do we achieve that? Jasmine shook her head, but decided to play along. My hands are talented, but we would need something more. So here I am, um, trying to decide what words to use because... Sometimes what you think would make logical sense does not actually fit in the medical world. So you've got to be a little bit more careful with how you word things. Um, and I want it to make sense as well to the reader. Fun fact, you'll notice at the bottom left of my screen that uh, it's two degrees Celsius outside. Not sure what that is Fahrenheit, but it's just slightly above freezing. Blew, cold. <laughs> and it's nighttime. And uh, earlier in the video, it showed a nice little quarter moon, I believe. Um, and you can see that we've reached 11.15 p.m. Blew. Getting late at night, still writing. And at some point, <laughs> we can get almost all the way to midnight. But just little fun things that you can see that, yes, I uh, also recorded this video on April the 9th, and I believe it is airing, ooh, what day? The 12th. So we do write a little bit ahead. This is not live, but kind of gives you a fun little idea of what's going on. So yes, could you take veins from elsewhere in his body and use them to bridge between these veins and the new heart? Questioned Marshall. Personally, that's not going to work. Uh, his entire system is thin, warned Jasmine. What 
ever is done, it cannot involve cutting or using a needle on those vein walls. Marshall stopped, looking at Jasmine. Insulation? Pardon? a confused Jasmine asked. Insulation, repeated Marshall. Could you wrap the veins in something? Something to fuse to the vein in a short period of time which would thicken the walls, thus creating enough viscosity to allow for surgery. For those of you who need a definition of viscosity, that is thickness. Usually in regard to liquids, but in this case, we'll use it in regards to uh, the vein walls. Uh, the risk, Jasmine automatically protested, even as her mind started to sift through the possibilities. A simple accidental scrape of the vein wall, and he could bleed out since there would be no way to fix it. So we are going to leave it right here for now for this week, and thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe or hit the like button, since this is free for you to do and it helps me with the algorithms. And we will continue with this particular scene on Writing Wednesday number 9 next week. And I hope that we will see you here for it. I would like to thank you for watching this video and I hope that you enjoyed it. Please consider subscribing, liking, sharing, or clicking the bell for future videos. All of these things are free for you to do and really help me with the algorithms to grow this channel and to grow my platform. Remember, you can find my audiobooks on YouTube or my ebooks and paperbacks on Amazon. I also have books in the Kindle Unlimited program. So happy listening and happy reading.